Good morning. My name is Jamel Thomas, and I currently serve as the class leader for my cadet class for MPD's Cadet Corps program. I'm honored to be back at my old school, Baloo Senior High School, joined by my fellow cadets and our chief of police, Chief Conti, as a representative of the Metropolitan Police Department. This program has given me so many opportunities and has taught me valuable skills that I tend to use to help my community a better place. With today's announcement, I look forward to seeing more of my peers join this program with me and hopefully work alongside one another on the streets of D.C. one day. We are the future. I know that there are endless opportunities for our generation and that I encourage other young D.C. residents to take advantage because I've already seen the positive impact that this program can have on people. There is no better symbol of this opportunity than Chief Conti. You're welcome. He was once in my shoes, and through hard work and dedication, he rose through the ranks to become the leader of the best department in the nation. Yeah. His story is so inspirational to all cadets, and it's exciting to know that one day, one of us could be following his footsteps. So on the behalf of the Cadet Corps and the Metropolitan Police Department, I would now like to introduce the mayor of D.C., Mayor, Mayor Bowser. I just got goosebumps from the cadet. Let's give the cadet a big round of applause. Welcome to the home of the Baloo Knights. Let's hear it for Baloo Senior High School. Principal, thank you for hosting us. When I walked in the building, I, I got goosebumps then too, because I said, look at this beautiful building, and thank God the children are here, learning back together with their peers, with their teachers, um, getting academics certainly, but also getting all of the extracurriculars that go along with being in high school. And I couldn't be happier for them. Uh, or for what that means for their families in our city. Uh, I'm also very uh, pleased to be here with our outstanding police chief, uh, Robert Conti, and members of the Metropolitan Police Department. Give them a big round of applause as well. They have a tough job, and their job is especially tough right now as we are experiencing spikes a violent crime in the city that is troubling for everyone. And we know it is especially troubling for our high school students uh, who unfortunately may even be closer to some of these acts of violence. They just wanna be able to go to school, be with their friends, play sports, be out in the community, be with their families, do what young people do, uh, and do it without being worried about gun violence. The chief and I, uh, we wake up every day committed to making sure that will be their reality. We wake up every day committed uh, to throwing every single resource that we have at this spike in violence until all of us, the community, the Metropolitan Police Department, every D.C. government agency, D.C. public schools, the courts, supervising agencies, everybody will work together um, so that we will flatten this curve too. That includes our violence interrupters, our job training programs to make sure that people have access to opportunity. And it, makes, and it also includes making sure that the police department has enough officers to meet the needs of our cities. And those officers represent and reflect our community and our values. And how do uh, we do the last part? Chief Conti can say more about what goes into the hiring process at MPD, but I will say this part, we are hiring. And one of the most effective tools for building a police department that reflects our values is through our cadet program. Approximately half of MPD's current cadets are women and 97% are people of color. That's why in my first term, we raised the age for participating in the cadet program from 21 years old 
to 24 years old, similar to the change that I made to the Marion Berry Summer Youth Employment Program. We also increased, increased funding for the program, grow, growing it from 20 cadets a year in 2015 uh, until this year we funded 150 cadets. And yesterday, uh, the chief urged me to submit legislation to the council that will modify the cadet program and allow us to hire not just graduates of DC high schools, but other people who fit the criteria who are DC residents. We have a lot of young people who live in DC who can make a positive impact on MPD, and we want to review those potential candidates. We're also at Baloo to announce the relaunch of the high school cadet program. That's good news, right? <laughs> Assistant Chancellor. We've talked previously about the nearly $30 million that we're investing over the next three years to reimagine work based learning in high schools. And people have heard me talk about this. How do we use high school, especially the 12th grade year, to make sure that young people have access to work? Now by providing high school seniors an opportunity to join the cadet program while they're still in school, students will have the opportunity to earn and learn at the same time starting their journey uh, to MPD. Many of our current MPD cadets are Baloo graduates on the pathway for more Baloo students to join um, their ranks. <clears throat> so this is what it means. A high school student can work part-time as long as they're meeting, you know, what, what they need to meet at Baloo Senior High School. They can work part-time and earn $17 an hour and be able to make that money while they're doing something positive to support their community. And so uh, I will look into, so I hope that students will uh, ask us questions today during today's prospect day. And you will especially ask questions of Chief Conti. And you're gonna hear in just a minute how his story is your story, or it could be your story, if you decide to join us in the cadet program. So with that, uh, let me uh, introduce our Chief of Police, Robert Conti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. Uh, as the mayor was talking and as our young cadet was talking, uh, I too uh, stand here with goose, goosebumps really before you. Uh, I'm excited about what I see behind me. This is remarkable, and I'll explain it in a second. The young people over here in the TAM, all police cadets, all DC kids, they will be graduating in December, headed to the streets of the District of Columbia to patrol the communities that they come from. That is outstanding. <laughs> the young people over here in the light blue, there are, are, are currently in our police cadet program, and they too will one day wear that uniform and then transition to that uniform. But when you talk about pathway to the middle class, when you talk about fair shot, you talk about what Mayor Bowser is doing for the young people of our city, this is a clear example of what happens when you have a dedicated mayor who is committed to the young people of the District of Columbia. Let's give our mayor a round of applause. I assure you, this commitment would not happen had it not been for her support of what it is we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do really is to relaunch, to restart a program that I started in as a high school kid sitting in the seats right where you are, right where you are. And I'm specifically talking to the young people over here because these are blue senior high school students who are interested in becoming future police officers. But when I sat in your seats, Back in 1988, I sat in your seat. That decision that I made that day, it changed the rest of my life. Never did I ever, ever, ever think that I would be standing before you here today as the leader of the sixth largest police department in the country of a major city. 
police department. Never did I ever believe that I'd be overseeing a budget of over half a billion dollars. Never, never, never. Just a kid from Carver Terrace who graduated from Spengarn Senior High School. But what does investment look like? What does it look like when you give a young person their fair shot, their opportunity, their pathway to the middle class? For some people, their pathway out of poverty, their ticket to education. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. And these opportunities are being made available for you and for other D.C. residents all across our city. When I talked to the mayor about this, when I talked to the mayor about this, really the focus was to make sure that we expand the applicant pool of young people, young people who are interested in becoming police officers. We wanted to expand the applicant pool because we know, we know for certain that some of the young people, because of many different situations, because of many different things that happen in our lives, whether it's stuff that's going on in the home, your mother lives in D.C., your father happens to live in Maryland, or for some reason we got some kids placed in schools outside of D.C. and they don't necessarily graduate from a D.C. high school, but right now they're working in Chipotle down in Chinatown or someplace. We don't want to exclude opportunities for those young people as well. So while I'm excited to launch this new program with our mayor, I'm excited to launch this new program and to invite you young people to become part not only of the larger district government family, but a part of your city, a part of the Metropolitan Police Department, the ability to make investments in the community that raise each and every one of you. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about how your lives are going to be changed as a result of this, how you are going to inspire other young people who look just like you, who talk like you, who walk like you, who go to the same corner store that you go to. You're going to inspire, inspire other young people to say, hey, I too can serve my community one day. So I appreciate your presence. I acknowledge your presence for those of you who are interested and those that may be watching at home on TV. Encourage your young people. You want to get involved? If things matter to you that's happening in our community, you want to say, see safer streets in the District of Columbia? Join the Metropolitan Police Department. Join our police cadet program. We're hiring for young people between the ages of 17 and 24, our high school seniors. I want to get my hands on you before we, the world has an opportunity to put its hooks into you. I want to get an opportunity. I want you to have the experience like I did. I went on a police ride along at the age of 17. It blew my socks off, and I knew that I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. So much so that not only did it touch me, but my sister, two years behind me, she went the same path. And now she's a police officer, long-serving, over 25 years in the Metropolitan Police Department. It's an incredible story, but it's not just my story. Each one of these young people can come up here, and they can tell you their story. And I guarantee you, it sounds like, like, it's just like my story. It's just like my situation. It's just like what happened with me. And that is a powerful thing. That is a powerful thing, a powerful tool that we have at our disposal as citizens of the District of Columbia. The greatest honor that we have is to serve our communities, serve the communities that raised us, serve the communities that give us our fair shot. So I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm excited that you guys are interested in becoming uh, police cadets. A little bit more uh, about the program. Not only, now check this out. This is, I'm talking to these young people over here. So as you enter the police cadet program, we'll start paying you at a part-time rate. and You earn about 10500 for the year. But once you graduate and you start wearing the uniforms that these guys wear at 17, for some of you who graduated 17, or some of you who may gra graduate at 18 or 19, we'll start paying you $34,000 a year once you make it to this part here. That's a round of applause for these young people. It's an opportunity. It's an incredible opportunity. At the end of the day, I would love to see you go through all of this and say, man, I'm out here serving my community. Not only do I want to just put money in your pocket, I want to make sure that you guys are educated along the way. We're going to make sure that you go to college. We're going to make sure that you get the credits that you need. We're going to make sure that we invest in you because you are important and you matter to the citizens of the District of Columbia. You matter to me. You matter to the mayor. And that is important. So I want to thank you guys for being here tonight. I want to, or today, I want to thank you for the example, for the courage that you're showing. Guess what? I had to walk home in Carver Terrace with my uniform on just like that. I know what some of the things, man, I got to get on the bus. I got to be on the subway. I get it. Trust me. All of that. But when I look back, I have no regrets. I have no regrets. Trust me when I tell you that. The benefits 
of this program and how it will change your life. For some people, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's a pathway out of poverty. For some people, some people, it changes the trajectory of their life that for the first time they begin to understand what generational wealth looks like and they begin to do things for their family that their mamas and daddies couldn't do for them. You guys can be the difference. You guys can be the ones to change the trajectory of your entire family by a decision that you make today. So I want to thank you again for being here. We have a special young man who is with us here today. I am proud to introduce to you Mr. Dwan Cunningham. Dwan. Dwan is 18 years old and a recent McKinley Tech High School graduate, currently residing in Ward 4. Dwan has completed our background process, and today, Mayor Bowser and I are pleased to welcome him as our newest cadet with the official signing of our cadet contract. Proud of you, man. All right. Now you have an opportunity to hear from Mr. Cunningham, our newest cadet of the Metropolitan Police Department. How are you guys doing? My name is Dewan Cunningham. I graduated from McKinley Technology High School. I am 18 years of age. Um, I, I just wanted to join the cadet program to make a change in the community, um, just help my community strive, get back to, to the community that I grew up in. Um, I just, I'm just a small person to a, a bigger cost. I just wanted to work in the law enforcement and just change the, the look of police officer today. Thank you so much, man. Congratulations to you, brother. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, join me uh, in a round of applause for Dewan. That's a, that's a decision that's going to change his life, trust me. And I just also want to quickly acknowledge the, uh, um, his, his uh, relatives that are here. His little brother is here, or younger brother is here, as well as his, uh, his mom. Oh, he's your little brother. You're the bigger brother. His older brother. Sorry about that. He got those glasses on. I couldn't see his eyes, man. But his older brother and his mom are here. Let's give them a round of applause for supporting him. Okay, uh, now that we've, uh, Dewan has signed this contract, uh, we can move to uh, any questions that you guys may have. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. The young man who just called the point. That's you, sir. Look, your first press conference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, besides your parents and your family, what three things really motivated you to be in a cadet program? Well, first, um, it was cadet Malik Loggins. Um, he the one who referred um, me to his program. He had told me all the great things that uh, the program would give you, like that, the education that I would be uh, getting at UDC. I would be starting that in the spring semester. Um, also to patrol the, the streets of the community uh, and just to have a better, a better understanding of the community that I grew up in. Um, is that all the questions? <laughs> yes, sir. What I gotta do to wear your shirt? First of all, you gotta you gotta join. You gotta sign like that young man did. That's thing number one. 
Thing number two, you got to work really, really, really hard. And thing number, thing number three is you got to do this thing because you love it, because it's from your heart. You do those three things, I promise you, you'll be able to wear this shirt. Yes, sir. You got a lot of questions, okay. but this I love that. I like that. That's impressive. Yeah, we need to get this young man's um, phone number. Seriously. Yes, um, sir. What are some things we could, uh, our school or our community, our, our, our school or community can do to motivate and strive students to want to? So, like he just mentioned, he came by way of referral, and I think that as people, and so did my sister, and so did a lot of other people that I that I know. Uh, you know, when you're in something, just like anything, like like a, a concert or a website or Instagram page, somebody see something, they tell somebody else about it, right? And that's how that's what we can do to spread the word about the opportunities that exist. Uh, there's some in, in, in some communities, some places, that's not the case here in the District of Columbia, who would say, ah, oh, you know, people don't want to be the police and this and that. And I counter that narrative every day because I'm walking these streets every day, walking these communities every day, and I'm talking to young people every day. And you're an example of that. And you're going to tell some other young person about the opportunities that exist for you. And that young person is going to tell somebody, and that young person is going to tell somebody, and other people will become interested as a result of your leadership and you're really being bold about what it is you believed in. When I said I wore that uniform over in Carver Terrace going to and from school, sometimes I have a jacket on, sometimes I not, but people in my neighborhood, they knew. They knew, like, oh, that dude, he, he made a choice, right? He's not going to be out here in these streets, and that's real, and people can respect real, right? I think you can, too. I see you nodding your head. So that's, where, that's, uh, that, that's what you can do, man. Next question. Hi, how are you? Uh, good. Good. My name is Aaliyah. Hi, Aaliyah. Um, I just, Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Hi, Aaliyah. Uh, I just wanted to ask, um, when you first started the cadet program, was there ever a time that you felt like you wanted to give up or that you couldn't do it? Yeah. So I didn't feel like that as a, uh, as a police cadet. Probably around 1994, the city was, in, as a matter of fact, uh, the city was in bad financial ruins uh, back at that point. And one of the first things that got cut back at that point, when they started looking at budget, the mayor talked about how when she came in office, we only had like 15 cadets in place. When I started, it was like 83 cadets in my class, but they were making cuts, and the cadet program was one of those programs that they cut. I was not just upset about that, but just kind of the direction uh, you know, that, that we were going. And I wanted to you know, do something different kind of thing, but I'm so glad I stayed. I'm so glad I hung in there. I'm so glad I, I put in the work that needed to be put in there because I wouldn't be standing here before you today if I had just given up. You know, my parents didn't raise a quitter. I promise you that. You know what I mean? So I'm going to keep on pressing on, pressing on for whatever it is and do whatever it is that needs to be done in order to achieve whatever goals I've set for myself. And you look like an achiever. You look like someone who sets goals for herself. You know what I'm saying? And that's important. That's important for young people to have those goals, right? I didn't think I would be chief of police, but I was like, okay, I, could, I might be able to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so happy I stayed, and thank you for your question. Hey, can I just say yes, ma'am. A young lady to Aliyah is that um, one statistic that I mentioned that is in the cadet program more than half of our 50 percent and some in some years more are women or young women who are joining our cadet program even when you look at our force unlike a lot of forces around the country uh, we have a better representation of women um, and the, the chief and I are very committed um, to making sure that we are a department uh, where female officers can be safe and can thrive. And so we, we, like, we like the men joining, but we like the women joining too. To that commitment that the mayor just talked about with respect to our, our young women, you know, over half, as she mentioned earlier, over half of the, the uh, young people that are in our program, or just less than half, I'm sorry, of the young people that are in our program are women. That's an important thing. So there's room for you at the table, right, number one. Uh, number, the other thing to that, the Metropolitan Police Department is currently about 22% females. That is high in the law enforcement world. We have a commitment in the Metropolitan Police Department to be at 30% by the year 2030. And all of you guys, all of these young women here, are part of that commitment to be at 30% by 2030. So I appreciate you asking that question. I look forward to you two sitting here in this seat and we signing you up, Aaliyah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So and my name is Araya. Um, my question for y'all is, like, what's the like, toughest thing you had to do in this that program? 
The toughest thing that I had to do? Oh man, I'm, I think my first day in the academy, I could do, only do like eight push-ups, right? <laughs> I was like, like, I mean, like, yeah, that was like weak, like real bad. It was real bad. But uh, aside from that, um, you know, the physical part of it is what it is. But we work with young people. You know, we look at all these young people. We got them in all shapes and sizes, tall. You know, some of them out just a little bit. We try to get them here. I've tried to maintain this boyish figure for a long time, right? And that comes with hard work. That comes with dedication. But we want to work with you on things like, you know, your nutrition and all that kind of stuff. For some young people, the challenges, that they vary, right? For some of them, it's, hey, look, I'm not the best student, and I'm in college now, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm attending UDC, and that's a real issue for me. You know, I'm not the best math student. But we work with you through it. We have an amazing staff. We, I see our UDC partners over here in the corner. We have an amazing team of people that are committed to your success that are committed to your success. If you're committed to the program, we are committed to your success. So, you know, the hard things, the barriers, we find ways to move those barriers out of the way. We really do. We really go out of our way uh, to do that. We understand that the young people that we hire are not perfect. I was not perfect. No police officer is perfect. None of these young people up here are perfect. Some people might think, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta, be, I gotta be perfect. I gotta have straight A's. I gotta have this. I gotta... No, you don't. No, you don't. You have to be committed. You have to be honest. You have to have integrity. You have to have those things. But we can work with you. We can work with you. So I would encourage you as well to make sure you see our recruiters and that you talk to them about your particular situation and any areas that you might feel like, oh, I don't know. We got you. All right? All right. And this young lady. Yes, ma'am. The, 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 Madam Mayor. No, no, please. No, I just wanted to make sure I was summarizing so that everybody listening could, could, could follow what we're talking about. So the program that we're relaunching today uh, for high school students at Baloo. They go to school, they meet all their commitments to DC public schools, right? Chancellor, Assistant Chancellor. And then they can work part-time for MPD yes, and make $17 an hour while in high school. That's part one. The cadet program, once they graduate, they become eligible for the cadet program, right? Yes, and the program would then pay you, would then pay for your tuition at UDC. So you could go to UDC for free up to get 60 credits, which are required. So free tuition at UDC to get 60 credits while required. And at that time, you're earning a salary. You're earning 34,000 a year. And then when you complete the cadet program, you can join the, the recruits. And so you go to the police academy. And while at the police academy, you're also earning a salary. And then when you graduate from the police academy, you join MPD where you have a very competitive salary. Now, the chief talked about the salary of the blue shirts. He didn't talk about the salary of the white shirt here. I got to tell it. Because starting at 17 years old and joining MPD, the chief and I, I think, are about the same age. Uh, the chief has been with MPD for his career, and now he earns more than the mayor of Washington, D.C., because of a lot of hard work. But even better, he can retire whenever he gets ready to retire, whereas me, I have to work another 20 years. Okay? And that is a very good, good benefit. So the benefits that you get, because it's tough work, and it's stressful work, and that's why law enforcement people are in a retirement, uh, whereas other people in the government don't. Um, a pension retirement that you will earn for the rest of your life. So these are things for you to think about when he talks about changing the trajectory of his, his entire family and the generation after he is, the current generation and generation after that. That is um, because he made the decision, like many others, for a career in MPD, staying with MPD until he was retirement eligible, and still maybe after that thinking about doing something else. So all that's to say, join us at MPD. All right, I think you have the last question. Hi, my name is Sai. For me or the mayor? For you. Okay, go ahead. Um, What's your name again, dear? I'm sorry. Sai. Sai, okay. So what did you love most about the cadet program, and what did you, how did you motivate yourself to be where you are today? So what I love most about the cadet program was the people, right, inside and outside of the department. It's the same thing for me today. 
I grew up I grew up around all these people, right? I mean, since I was 17 years of age, right? I grew up around these folks. And you know, you've been around people for 25, 30 years. I mean, that that really becomes your family in community, right? As I leave here and go up the street and the mayor's in the car with somebody, hey chief, you know, and and I get a chance to engage community all the time. That like no matter what's going on in the world, that is like that's like fuel for me when I have an opportunity to go out here and engage community, engaging you today. This is energy for me when I get an opportunity to engage and talk to you about something that, I, that's, that I'm passionate about, something that I, that I really love, right? So that really is the thing. What motivated me to like kind of move to the next step and move to the next step, move to the next step, was the ability to impact and influence change, right? When, at, in, it, at, in this seat right now, I'm able to help all of you by reintroducing, by relaunching this program. I'm able to help all of you guys. 20, 30 years from now, the fact that you are doing whatever it is you're doing, if you are part of this police cadet program, it will be because the chief of police and the mayor had a conversation, an intentional conversation, that, des that decided to open up the door for additional young people to take advantage of this opportunity. That's empowering. That's empowering, not just for me, but for the community members that I, that I have the ability to touch. And as I hear from community members in the different positions that I've, that I've had, you know, that really helps, to, that's my compass, right? That helps to guide the directions that I go, the things that I do, the way that I take the department. People say, hey, Chief, we want to see more police. Hey, Chief, we want police over here doing this. Hey, Chief, we want... those things, those are the things that really energize me and kind of got me like, I can do, I can do this. I can do the next level. And I have, trust me when I tell you, I've been some amazing places, met some amazing people, but nothing compares, nothing compares to me being able to get up every day and serve the citizens of this great city. Nothing compares to that. So thank you for your question and I appreciate everyone else's questions. You guys are awesome and I look forward to you too deciding to join the Metropolitan Police Department. All right, All right now we'll take a few press questions. Any press questions? Sam, you can't join. <laughs> You're a little too old, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Um, Mayor, I want to ask about the, the various programs, uh, not the cadet program here, but uh, various programs you've got out here uh, against violence. Um, one of the criticisms I heard talking to somebody about this yesterday was that there's the, the uh, violence interrupters program, there's the building block, there's all these programs, but the, the rates of homicide continue to grow, and in, in, in many cases, violence continues to grow. Is there anybody like directing these things? You put out a newsletter yesterday that said you're throwing all the resources. You better believe at this. it. This person I talked to said well, it's like throwing everything at a wall. Is there any sort of direction for all of these efforts? Of course there is, and I'm not sure who you were talking to, but it's not like throwing it at a wall, but it is throwing it at targets. Uh, and being targeted about how we approach things. Like for example, the, the chief uses data to decide how to deploy the fall crime initiative. Uh, you asked me the other day, have we seen decreases? I didn't know the number, but now I do. Over 70% decrease in homicides in those fall crime initiative areas. And that's, that's very significant and we wanna keep that work going. We know where to target our uh, violence interrupters as well, and we're targeting our violence interrupters at those locations as well. So what we all have to recognize is some of these programs are acute and focus on the short-term problem, and others are longer-term issues. Uh, how do we get to people before they commit crimes? How do we make sure they're connected with jobs um, and job training programs and connected to jobs? How do we make sure all of our federal partners are working with us in the very fragile public safety ecosystem? Those aren't, aren't things that you flip on and off, but that we work towards every day. So our commitment is this. Uh, we regard the safety of DC neighborhoods and DC residents, uh, little girls and boys, grandmas and grandpas, brothers and uncles. That's our number one priority. And we are going to try everything um, that shows promise until we flatten the curve that is violence. Uh, and we know that we will do it together. 
represents uh, force, basically, in terms of controlling crime. You bet. And you've got all the, you've got more and more money going into these programs where you try to, I guess, change minds. But there doesn't seem to be anybody that's in charge of that side of it. Oh, of course there is. Uh, and oh, uh, forgive me for not answering that directly. We have a deputy mayor for public safety and justice who is responsible for all of the uh, alternate to, to law enforcement programs that we have in place that are in the public safety cluster. But then we also have opportunity programs um, that are a part of many agencies across the district. And ultimately, I'm in charge of it. And so recently, we pulled together, for example, all of those agencies and what we, we call a cap stat to review how we are deploying every one of the $58 million that became available on October the 1st um, to make sure we're getting those dollars out immediately. And our community is a partner, too. And part of what Building Blocks has done uh, recently is look at effective community organizations that are informal. And some of the things that they do are informal. They're not nonprofits. They don't have boards. But they do do the work every day. And we've made many grants uh, to them to also continue doing work in the, in the community. Um, Mayor Bowser, maybe for Chief Conti, yep. can you just talk a, a little bit about how this program and other programs maybe you have work to restore the trust between the community and MPD that may have eroded over years? Yes, uh, thank you for that uh, question, Mark. Um, that obviously is one of the things that we work at every single day. Uh, in addition to things like the police cadet program, you know, there are other things that we are doing within the agency uh, to make sure that we increase those amount of positive contacts with community members, our community-focused patrol that we have out uh, in community. Uh, most recently, uh, we've been uh, doing what we dub uh, MPD Strengthening Community Connections, where officers, detectives uh, from all across uh, the different areas of our department are deployed out in community, having interactions with community daily. And that is important. That is important that people see their police officers in their community. In an age where we have a shrinking workforce, that is real. Uh, trying to make sure that we do the things that we need to do to fight crime, but also making sure that we do those things that make sure that we have legitimacy uh, uh, within the communities that we serve, that we have trust of the community members that we serve. All those things are important. And really trying to, to be very intentional about those, uh, those interactions I think is very powerful and, and quite frankly to some community members, uh, life-changing. I had an opportunity to talk to a guy recently. He told me he had been incarcerated for, 40, for 43 years years and he had uh, he had been released from prison he's matter of fact he told me he said the clothes he had on are the clothes that he's been wearing every day and he was going to a church uh, to wash his clothes uh, every other couple of days or whatever and he said chief he said I, I, is there something that you can do uh, to help me is it you know I'm able to and I tell people this all the time the, 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 the most impactful thing that I wear on my belt really is my telephone because I'm able to pick up the phone connect people to resources. Sometimes, you know, I can help, sometimes I can't. But things like that, for that individual, that matters. It matters because that connection may change that person's life. It may change the trajectory of that person's life. And it's not just me, but you have other police officers that are out in community who do that every day, Mark. Thank you for the question. Follow up. Sure. Uh-oh. Mark, I know you've been out of school for a while, but that just means class is going to change, man. It's okay. Also too old for the cadet program. <laughs> Uh, I'm wondering, I don't know if we've hit 200 homicides by today. We're at 199 we, as of today. Mark. So we're right on the verge yeah, of hitting are. 200. It's yeah. obviously not a, a benchmark you're looking forward no. to. What do you say to the, to the citizens of the District of Columbia who are reeling from a pandemic, trying to get their life back to normal, but faced with this other pandemic of homicides? Yeah, you know, that's very troubling um, for us, not just here in the District of Columbia, but for many communities uh, all across our nation right now. We're experiencing about a 13% uptick uh, in homicides. Uh, that's about a difference of about 23 lives that matter in our city that were unnecessarily uh, taken away from us uh, too soon. 
Uh, that is very unfortunate. So as the Metropolitan Police Department, obviously we have to be committed to fighting crime, to do all the things that we need to do to make communities safer for the residents and visitors to the District of Columbia. And we will continue to do that. I think there are other important metrics to look at. For example, that less people have been shot this year than people who were shot same time last year. What has gone up is the lethality. The lethal more people have died as a result of their gunshot wounds, and that is a loss for our city. That is tragic. But when we talk about, or when I specifically talk about these things with respect to holding violent criminals uh, accountable, when I talk about you know, some of the, the, the weaponry that we're seeing in, in the streets of the District of Columbia, where people are converting firearms into automatic weapons, the fact that we've recovered over 2,000 illegal firearms arms in the District of Columbia so far this year, you know, I'm saying to the community that the Metropolitan Police Department, the mayor of the city, is committed to fighting violent crime, and we will continue to fight violent crime. Our robberies in our city, while we are talking about an uptick in homicides, the robberies in our city, we, we're looking at a decrease in robberies. We're looking at about even or a decrease in uh, assault with dangerous weapons. So. We're continuing to fight the fight, and we will continue to do that. Uh, right now, we're about flat even overall for violent crime in the city. What's up in the city right now is a 2% uh, uh, uptick in... Um uh, a 2% uptick in property crime. So that is an issue too, because we have residents in our city who may not be impacted by violent crime, but property crime is their issue. And so we're dealing with all of those things. And I want the residents of the city to know that we will not stop. We will not stop until we suppress violent crime in our city, and we will do that with the help of all people involved. This is not a spectator, uh, fighting crime is not a spectator sport, it's not that. It's everybody being involved. It's the Metropolitan Police Department, it's community members, it's businesses, it's all of that. So I appreciate your question, Mark, but we're still in this fight. Can I ask you an off-topic question? Yeah. Could you respond to the letter from the, I believe, 10 members of the D.C. Council regarding your lifting of the mask mandate? And can you update us on when we might see that mayor's order for the mask mandate? Mark, I'll be uh, working on the mayor's order today, so I expect that you will see it uh, tomorrow. And I'm happy to talk to any members of the council at any time. Uh, so I expect that they will come down to the office or give me a call. Did you want to respond publicly to, to their criticism of Relieve of, of lifting the mask mandate? Um, you know, I, I could. Um, and I could also refer to the, the 10 times they asked us when we were going to lift the mask mandate. Um, so the thing about responding in a crisis is that it takes, uh, sometimes you have to make uh, tough decisions. Uh, you have to make the best decisions um, in, in, in advance of those decisions, and I believe we've made the best decisions for our city. Uh, let me be clear about something, Mark. What we've done um, is exactly what happened in the Virginia County surrounding us back in June, um, is to say that uh, we, have, uh, we don't have a mass mandate, but we will have health uh, recommendations. So you should think of this as going from a mandate to a recommendation. Uh, about mask wearing and those recommendations will be based on um, levels of risk and what's happening in the community. Hello, my name is Donovan Thomas um, with the Washington Post. I was wondering if Chief Conti could speak on the retention rates of the cadet program. Sure. Oh, man, I'm happy to talk about that because here's the one thing about our police cadets and I should have mentioned this uh, to these young people earlier. Uh, we ha they have the highest retention rate of anyone in our department. When they come and they join the Metropolitan Police Department, like yours truly, we don't leave. They stay here, they serve, they, si they, ser they serve our city, and that should be commended. So thank you for that question. That's a great question. I have one for the chief. A few months ago, we were in a press conference where you were announcing that you, or the force was able to arrest uh, a man who had committed a violent crime and killed somebody. In that press conference, you talked about the perception of police with the community and uh, people not wanting to talk with the community. Then just now you mentioned, you know, that you proudly wore that cadet uniform in your neighborhood and explaining, you know, to these kids that you understand what it's like to be in their shoes. But in, the, in that press conference, you, are, you were mentioning, you know, wanting to improve that relationship. Have you and your officers seen any improvement in that? And, you know, do, do young men like the one behind you who stood up and said, I'm joining because I want to change that perception, does that, you know, help, help this cause? Yeah, I think that, the, and this is just my opinion, my perception. Again, I'm out here every day in communities. Yesterday I was right out on a, 
uh, Good Hope Road and Martin Luther King Avenue, then I was over in Brentwood and Saratoga, uh, I believe that the pendulum is shifting. I really do. And I believe that community members, uh, I was at an awards thing last night, I forgot about that, where not only were there community members, but also council members stand up praising the work of the Metropolitan Police uh, Department officers that they go out here and do every day. You know, part of that mending of the relationship with community is being present in community. For us to interact with community members when it's not that we're taking someone into custody, but just because we're out there and we're in the community to help. And we've been doing that yesterday when I was on um, uh, uh, Good Hope Road they were out just doing business checks with community members across the street from the methadone clinic. Officers are out, officers out there uh, handing out literature, uh, connect, connecting community members to other services. These are not things that normally the police have the responsibility to do, but it's powerful when it comes to building the trust that we have or the trust that we certainly need to do our jobs with community members. So, yeah, I'm seeing it improve. And I don't know if everyone else in here can, you know, everyone has their experience, but as I go out and about and I talk to community members. I see the pendulum swinging. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.